You don't want to wear it for me while I'm gone? All right, what's up, Blackheads? We are doing a test ride today on the 2019 Harley Davidson Electro Glide Standard. Harley Davidson here, Orlando Harley Davidson here. Just got it in, and uh, lots of you guys are asking for a test ride on this thing, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll look at it. We'll talk about some specs, and then we'll uh, throw a leg over it and take it for a test ride. All right, taking a look at the new 2019 Harley-Davidson Electric Glide Standard. Comes in starting at 18,999 MSRP. It may vary by dealer. Just to quickly go over the specs before we take a test ride, it only comes in one color option, Vivid Black. It does have ABS as an option, does not come with it standard though, and adding ABS is going to be $795. Security system option is standard, cruise control is standard. Looking at the engine, it is a Milwaukee 8107 1746 cc's. It is electronically fuel injected. It has a chrome 2 to 1 to 2 dual exhaust with tapered mufflers. Overall length of the bike is 94.5 inches. The seat height is 26.8 inches. It has a 4.9 inch ground clearance, a 26 degree rake. The trail is 6.7 inches. The wheelbase is 64 inches. The front tires are a 130-80-17 and the rear is a 180-65-16. Fuel capacity is 6 gallons. With the oil filter, it has a 5.2 quart oil capacity. Dry weight is 781 pounds wet weight is 820 pounds luggage capacity is going to be 2.3 cubic feet in terms of performance from the engine you're looking at 111 foot pounds of torque at 3250 rpm right lean angle is going to be 31 degrees and left lean angle is going to be 29 degrees regarding fuel economy it sets at 43 miles per gallon and for the brakes it has 32 millimeter four piston fixed front and rear and dual disc on the front so cool thing, it's got this little cut out here. You can throw stuff in, so I already threw my sunglasses in there. Heat wave visuals, if you guys want a pair of those, you can get 10% off of those by using coupon code, do it with Dan. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of the parking lot here. Well, into the parking lot. I'm gonna go over controls here real quick as per normal. Hey, if you guys like videos like this, test ride videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon also so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Do all sorts of test rides. I think I've got test rides on like 100 motorcycles. It's pretty crazy. All right, so pretty traditional Harley controls here, guys. You've got uh, basically your lock here, ignition, fork lock, accessory, on off kill switch. Then you've got hazards, you press those indicators there press man turns them off starter the right indicator left indicator on the left side horn damn that's a loud horn <laughs> you got your high beam indicator there and then back down to low and then your pass light which if you press and hold in it's basically like flashing they call it a pass light and then you have your cruise control down here you've got your fuel level so we got a quarter quarter tank of fuel about speedometer so your miles per hour and then you've got your little display down there it's currently displaying odometer uh, you also have a button here where your trigger finger is, you know, for the selection. So that's going to change that. So if I basically pull it in, it changes it to trip A, trip B, remaining mileage. So that's how much mileage you have left until you are empty. No more gas. You've got the time, which is currently military time, 1714. And then back to odometer. Over here, you've got more indicators. You've also got your RPMs and then your voltmeter for your battery. Pretty much it. Pretty standard stuff. Does have self-canceling blinkers. The thing to note about this bike is they've basically cut it way down so that it brings the price way down so that it's much more affordable right so you don't have your fancy you know touch screen here you actually don't have speakers here these are just covers so no speakers there but you can easily add all this stuff if you want to so you can use that as a storage you also have this little area as like some storage it looks like there's supposed to be a plug back there for something um, and then you've also got a little plug right here as well 
So on this one, you've got basically like the aluminum upper rocker box covers, the aluminum side covers, you know, set of chrome. They've taken tons of stuff off of it. You don't have a, a heel shifter. You only have the toe shifter. And then on the back, you don't have the passenger pegs. You don't have the uh, rear dressing stuff for like the lights and all that. They've uh, basically taken a ton off of this bike in order to greatly lower the price. If you guys are looking for a more affordable touring option from Harley Davidson. Another thing they took off was this little this little ability to open and close this vent right here. It's just open. You don't have the ability to close that. In my opinion, I think it's a really smart move because it basically gives you different levels of motorcycle. You know, it's like they're all very similar. So this one has the 107 cubic inch, but if you're not looking for, you know, like the radio, but you want the touring, you know, you're not looking for all the fancy, like, you know, touch screen and all that stuff. This is a great answer. Thousands of dollars less. And, uh, you know, me personally, like, I don't really use my, I don't even use my navigation in my truck. So, you know, I've got a, I've got a truck and it's got navigation built into it and a nice touch screen. And dude, I never, I never use it because it's all on your phone, you know? So one of the salesmen back there was basically saying like, you could get a mount and basically mount your phone right there. So, I mean, you're, you're really not missing out on anything because, I mean, you pretty much have all that functionality that this thing would have, kind of. I mean, not, not all the functionality, but most of the functionality that a touchscreen here would have in your pocket, in your phone. So you mount it up right there, boom, you're good to go. Man, I was trying to get out here and do this before traffic. Well, what's up, Ram 1500? Also, before we get too far into the test ride, just to give you guys a heads up, uh, here is a current list of bikes that I own, as well as a list of bikes that I have owned. And then I will also throw uh, a couple in there that uh, I've ridden, I've test ridden all sorts of bikes. So, total transparency, I'm, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of touring. You know, Harley's touring line, just because it's not like something that, that I buy. I currently own uh, the Harley Davidson FXDR, which is about as far away as you can get from, you know, this <laughs> style of motorcycle. However, I definitely have a, a, a appreciation for these style of bikes because of what they're, what they're built for. They're built for distance riding. They're built for comfort. One thing that always surprises me about these bikes is despite how big they are, they actually feel very like, I don't know if nimble is the right word, but they always feel like you can just kind of toss them around pretty easily, which is nice. Especially like with the new Milwaukee 8s. The new Milwaukee 8s have, uh, they produce some good power, so. Oh, also on the bottom here, which I just noticed, you have a gear indicator, so it says I'm in fourth right now. If I downshift, it shows a three, so I'm in third. I like this little reflection, it gives a good effect. You're like, whoa! So in terms of ergonomics, Harley's touring line are traditionally more comfortable, right? So I am sitting upright. Braking feels good. So one thing this bike does not have is ABS. It's another one of those features that they removed from it to keep the cost down. So no ABS, but the braking does feel nice. It does have a dual disc front brake coming to a stop. That's where my feet sit. I'm five foot 10 inches tall and uh, it does not feel too tall or overwhelming at all. It's actually very comfortable. Also regarding the seat, talking about cutting back, right? They, uh, they give you a single, it's basically a solo seat instead of the seat with a, uh, a rear pillion, a passenger pillion. So if you want that, I mean, they basically strip this thing down and you can add what you want to it. You can customize it how you want. Instead of having to buy all the stuff on like say the street glide or the road glide or the standard, you basically just pick out the electric glide standard. Boom, you have what you have what you want. I'm always really surprised by the uh, by the touring stuff and how good it feels. Oh man, one thing though, it doesn't really allow that wind flow right here. So it gets a little stuffy in a full face. That's for sure. easily flickable so yeah talking about going back to ergonomics yeah seating position you're pretty much sitting upright it's very comfortable my arms are you know pretty much straight out uh, the seat you know is pretty comfortable I don't know if this one has that gel padding or whatever it I mean it feels pretty comfortable which I'm surprised about and it definitely 
feels like it holds you in more, you know? So it's not like one of those solo seats that like lets you slide out the back. I could definitely see taking this thing on long trips. So if I were buying a motorcycle, I really don't have any need, like I said, for all the, uh, the bells and whistles that come with the touch screen and all that. Just because, like I said, it's all on my phone. So, I mean, I would, I would buy something like, you know, a phone mount. And if I could put it there, then cool. But I mean, I've got, I've got my Senna, you know, Senna 30K communicator, like mounted to the side of my helmet. And uh, I connect my phone through that. So if I've got that on, I can take phone calls, I can listen to music. So, I mean, if I've got it mounted, like right in front of me, if I need navigation, that's, I mean, problem solved. Man, these Milwaukee 8s, they always feel good. One thing I always comment and say is, is that they sound good from the factory also. You know, it's like not one of those things, even with stock exhaust, you know, it sounds pretty decent. I think it's fair to say like in the future of me riding motorcycles, I will more than likely own a Harley touring bike. What's up, Scoop? Regarding uh, shifting, I mean, it's pretty much standard with all the new Harleys. Uh, shifting feels very prominent, you know, it's a very nice upshift feel, a very prominent click that you can feel it in your foot, a very prominent downshift click as well. The reason I always bring that up is because it, it's, it gives you like a positive confirmation that you have actually shifted, you know, obviously in addition to the, uh, so the gear shift indicator there, or the gear indicator. Yeah, I say that because if you guys have ever ridden a motorcycle, and I, I've ridden brand new motorcycles that have mushy shifters and I hate it. It's, I mean, you really can't feel if you've shifted. See, I mean, not, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's a really nice positive click to it. Leaning these things over, effortless, man. People are always worried about like the size of these bikes, you know, and the weight of them, taco. But I mean, it's, once you get going, they're weightless, you know? So off the top of this thing, I mean, I know we don't have that vent thing that we can adjust here, but I'm getting some buffeting at the top of my helmet a bit. You know, if I duck down and look through the windshield, it kind of goes away. But traditionally, you don't want to have to be all hunched over while riding, you know. Like I said, I'm 5 foot 10 inches tall, and uh, my eye my eye level is pretty much even with the windshield. So you got the GoPro is a little bit below my eye level. It's more at like the level of my mouth, but then eye level is like right at the windshield. So it's a it's a good height i'm looking over it like i said traditionally you don't want to be looking through it but it does offer that um, level of protection against the wind you know you're not really like hitting the wind as much it's funny we got uh we got bike week coming up and i would definitely enjoy having something like this to ride over to daytona from orlando instead of what i currently have right now which is a uh, 2019 harley davidson fxdr which is definitely not made for those distance trips. I imagine I'm going to feel quite beat up by the time we get over there. Busty Yui. Good radius. Man, it's just so comfortable riding these things. The seats just kind of cradle you. The suspension is nice. You know, it's like you know, hitting these kind of bumps and stuff. It just absorbs it really well. to stick my head up here to cool down jeez you really don't get much wind back here wearing a full face helmet gets a little warm dun, tick -a -tick -a -tick -a dun 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 tick -a -tick -a -tick -a dun 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 all right let's take this turn not bad all right that one time i took it to mexico was pretty fun It's nice the mirrors they uh, stick out far enough to where you're not looking at your arms you know you don't have to do that mirror lean which is nice yeah so overall I mean this to me I mean it's it's a good bike it's comfy me personally 
if I were buying a touring bike, I would probably buy the one with the fixed front fairing, the road glider. That's the one I would buy. Just, I mean, that's personal preference. They do the same thing. Honestly, whenever I test rode that bike, I didn't think I would like it, but I actually do quite a bit because uh, it removes any of like the wind or the vibration that you feel from your bars. And so it just feels like really smooth, which I mean, to me is really nice. But I think this fits a, uh, a very nice uh, part of the market. You know, if you're looking to buy a touring, but you're not looking for all the extra bells and whistles and you, you can live without that stuff, then do, do it. I mean, you can put different kinds of radios and speakers in here. You don't have to put, you know, the boom audio or, you know, any of the uh, Harley Davidson branded stuff. You can put like a Sony head unit in here and then wire it up, put some speakers, whatever speakers you want. And honestly, that would probably be cheaper than going the Harley route and, you know, going with Harley components versus uh, <laughs> you could probably buy some really badass components, you know, speakers, tweeters, whatever, and set it up yourself, you know, custom for cheaper than what you could buy the Harley ones that would be better, you know? So like throw some JBLs in there. What's what's another good brand? Rockford Fosgate, Bose? I, I don't do people really do Bose anymore. If I saw a Harley touring bike with Bose speakers right there, that would be a first. I've never seen that before. Pretty sure JBL is like, you know, one of those standards, so. And then you can, you know, customize these switches if you want to put like um, some James Bond stuff on it. You know, you could wire that one up to spill some oil if somebody's tailing you. You could wire that one up to spill some uh, some nails. And then wire up that one to do like an ejection seat. Over here you could have your, your weapons defense systems, you know, put a button there so that missiles like come out of your, uh, out of your bags and lock on to, you know, a person in front of you. And then boom, you've got a James Bond bike. <laughs> huh. Suspension test, that was a hard bump. And this, it felt great. I mean, <laughs> the bump didn't feel great, I'm saying. The bike felt great. It really absorbed that, that impact. I'm sure you guys could hear that. So overall thoughts? I mean, if this is what you guys are looking for, for, uh, you know, Harley Touring, you're not looking to drop as much money as you would for, like, you know, a Street Glide or a Road Glide Special, or a Standard even, Electric Glide Standard should be in your sights. Maruku! Bikes on 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 bikes. Check us out, man. We got a truck club going on here. I got the babyest of them. <laughs> Tacoma. Yeah, you're really able to maneuver this thing around. There we go. Park this thing for a second. Get off and have a look. All right, well, there you guys have it. That's a test ride on the brand new Harley Davidson 2019 Electric Glide. If you guys have any questions, be sure to post them up down in the comments below. A couple of the guys up here. Uh, are on YouTube and they will uh, answer the questions. It's a clean bike, man, I like it. I actually like the fact that it's really like stripped down and simplified. Basically like a nice answer to the touring without all the bells and whistles. And it actually allows you more customization instead of just going with what they give you. A couple people out there say that they were, they wish I was more critical in my reviews, but just to give you guys a heads up, I am a lover of all motorcycles. Like I said, I own a FXDR. I also own a Honda Gram, so it's a pretty wide range of motorcycles that I enjoy. I've owned sport bikes, so if you guys are looking for uh, for some of the cons, to me, it's like this fits a certain thing that somebody might be after. And so the cons to one person might not be the cons to the other person. The fact that it doesn't come with all that stuff, the display and you know navigation and all this stuff, it could be a con to one person, but it could be a pro to another. It's just a review. It's just to kind of show you guys what the bike is about, how it feels, how it handles you know, and general first thoughts and impressions. Yeah, like I said, if you guys enjoyed it, hit the like. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. Hit the bell icon so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Till next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. Catch you guys in the next one. Deuces. Oh, and that red lettering, though.